It's the 12th day of 30 Days Wild, and for my act of wildness today, I'm going to go out bat detecting. June is the perfect time for bats, because the temperatures are warm enough, and they should be getting their maternity roosts ready. So you can go out with a bit of equipment and find what bat species are in your local area. I'm going to be using the Magenta Bat 4 as one of my bits of tech today, but I've also got my Echo Meter Touch 2, which I also like to use. The Echo Meter Touch 2 is about £180 at the time of filming this and comes in this little box. Inside is quite a handy pouch for keeping it protected when you're not using it and it comes with a couple of different attachment points so that you can carry it around in your preferred way, whether it's strapping it around something or putting it on a keychain. The device itself isn't actually that big. It's quite handy for being able to carry around so long as you've got a device that you can also plug it into, which in my case tends to either be a phone or an iPad with the connection that I've got here. The device pairs up with an app that's the Echo Meter app and all you have to do is plug it into your device. Again, that can be a phone or an iPad or something like that. It's got lots of different settings, so live mode where you actually see the live sounds going on, the recordings where you can save that, GPS view where you can keep a record of where in the world you actually did your recordings. Then you've got things like auto ID selection. This is great for helping you determine what species they might be. So if I select Europe and the UK and then I can go to the country, which the closest country on this list to where I live will be the Ireland species. And I just have to go through and unselect some of the species that don't exist in my local area, such as the Barbastel bat. You've got various other settings that you can also put on. So this will be like whether it saves different files, whether it will allow for auto ID to take place, how sensitive the device is actually going to be to bats, so this can be really good for manipulating around the environment that you have. Once your device is connected, you just click start and you can start listening to what's around. There's also a record button if you want to be able to do the auto ID and to be able to record things that are coming along, but you don't need to record it. So this is currently in live mode and you can see with each sort of flick of my fingers, the sonogram is appearing as if I were a bat making a noise. This will pick up any sort of sound within the environment and you can see where the sort of peaks and troughs of this sound are and the pattern that they make. Now the auto ID feature can be really helpful for those not so familiar with bats to get an idea of, oh I've seen a bat in the sky, I have recorded it and I know for a fact now it's probably this species. But if you haven't seen a bat around, and it's picked up something and detected it as a bat, that's when you want to start using the sonograms to question it. So each bat will have its own specific sonogram, different patterns that they will have, um, usually sort of a rep repetitive series of shapes that's quite simple to identify once you know what you're looking for. And it's with these that you can sort of verify what matches are coming up. And you can click on the matches within the device to have a look at what notes you want to make and also if you want to choose an ID. So whether that be there is no ID for this, whether it's a noise or a specific ID from the list that you've already selected of possible species within the range. The Magenta Bat 4 is a great device for more beginner bat detectors who don't need all of the fancy things that the Echo Meter comes with. This is just a little battery powered module that's a self-contained detector. You can plug headphones in and you can also plug a device in to be able to record what it sounds like. You spin the wheel to get the frequency of sound that you want and then you can slide to turn it off and on and have volume control. And this means you can try and detect specific bats within specific sound ranges. And it's also got a handy little light in case you're having trouble looking at a feature for the bats. So if they come out of, say, a rooftop but you're not sure exactly where from, that can really help. And as you change the different frequency, you can hear that the sound coming out is slightly different. And when you get a bat come along, this sound will likely come out as a sort of click, click, click kind of sound. 
I'm going to follow a standard bat survey technique here, which is to sit in one spot and see what comes along. So usually with a bat survey, I would be out about a quarter of an hour before the sun sets, which by June can be quite late at night, uh, sort of maybe quarter to 10 in the evening. And you want to set up your detectors and just wait. And after a few minutes, if there are bats around, some of them will start appearing. So you might look really high in the sky if you live where noctuals live. They'll be some of the first ones out, flying really high in straight lines. And they'll be followed shortly by the pipistrelle species, which tend to come out around sunset or maybe a little bit afterwards. And then it'll be your myotis species that are coming out later, when it's already quite dark. So setting the frequency to these different species can help you with detecting what's around. Around 25 will be things like your noctual and your lyslers. 45 for common pipistrels and 55 is more for sopranos. And then it's your higher ranges for those myotis species of bats. With experience, you get to be able to tell very quickly what's a bird and what's a bat flying overhead. You can set up either detector or you can have one detector facing one way and one facing the other way. Or for some surveys that I've been on, we set up multiple echo meters with recordings on around a different site and we sort of walk in between those recorders to see what's going on. That tends to be on sites when there's not much activity and we're not expecting bats to really appear, so we can just check in and verify that sounds aren't being picked up. If they are and there's lots of activity, we'd rather have human eyes on to verify the recordings. I did try a few times through the evening with both of the bat detectors and also just one at a time. I'm doing this outside my house, so it's really easy to just nip out, spend five or ten minutes doing some detecting, come back in and wait a little bit longer if I didn't see anything. On a normal survey, say for a professional job, I would be out the entire time for dusk and the entire time for dawn to really truly say no I didn't or yes I did pick up bats. But I'm just doing this to see if I happen to spot any bats in my local area and I've got a foster dog waiting at home who doesn't really like me being away and out of sight for too long and also doesn't want to be sat in the cold with me for an hour and 45 minutes or something like that. So it's just a matter of going in and out and seeing if I could come across anything. Sadly, this time I didn't see any bats. I saw plenty of moths that could provide potential food for them. So there is the habitat here for them as well. A lot of tree lines in the area, but no bats tonight. I may try again in the future to see if it just happens to be a night where they aren't coming out. I really love going out bat detecting. It just reminds me of being out surveying around the country for different bat consultancy companies. And I always love seeing what species are going to appear and if I'm going to get the surprise of a maternity roost on that survey. If you're going out bat detecting this month, be sure to let me know what you end up finding because I always love hearing about your bat sightings. And make sure to subscribe to this channel to keep up with 30 Days Wild and hear more about the bats we have.